Hey guys, Coach Kelly here, official trainer of I Love Lacrosse TV. Today I'm going to get into speaking about cradling, and more specifically, we're going to talk a lot about the shooting cradle. Um, a few of our, our readers, actually, in the last few weeks, uh, three different people had all asked pretty much the same question. So when it comes to shooting cradle, which is basically this, when we're getting ready to pass or shoot, the way we're going to cradle is different than when we're running in the open field. So to explain this in better detail, the first thing I need to do is, I don't think that most players that come to me realize that there, there's three types of, there's three main types of cradles, right? Uh, I think most people think there's one. When we say cradling, what most people think of is a two-handed power cradle. So if, if I'm running upfield, th this mimics the arm motion of running, right? The only difference is that my arms move at the same time, right? But I'm pretty much here. My, my hand, my top hand's about three inches from the top of the stick. My bottom hand's on the butt end around my belly button, and I'm running up and down the field. We would use this only when there is no pressure on us, right? So if there's no pressure, we use the two-handed. It's just like running. That's the first type of cradle. The other type of cradle, there's the one-handed cradle, which we're not gonna really go into today. And then there's the shooting cradle. So the two-handed power cradle, I feel, is what everyone kind of thinks of. But the shooting cradle would probably be the most important. So right before we shoot, if we're doing this cradle wrong, so if we're getting ready to shoot and we're doing a power cradle, it can have a really serious impact on your accuracy, your power, on all sorts of things. So let's talk about the shooting cradle. So the first part of it is we're getting ready to shoot pass or we're gonna triple threat. So we're gonna talk about that first, triple threat position. I think I, I like relating things to basketball because most people have played that or you know, what's a triple threat position in basketball? I feel like in that sport, it's the first thing we learn. You're here, ball's right here, and what? That means you can dribble, you can pass, or you can shoot. Well, in lacrosse, our triple threat is here, right? So I'm protecting myself from my defender. I can dodge, pass, or I can shoot. Now, I can't be here with the power cradle. That doesn't work. So if you notice, see how my hands are in the triple threat? My back elbow, my top elbow is at 90 degrees, right? So obviously, the movement of the stick needs to be a little bit different. We kind of rock it back and forth. So our hand's moving here. See how the ball kind of stays put in the stick by rocking back and forth. That's the triple threat. We want to be ready here. So as we go to pass or shoot, to keep the ball on the stick, especially if we're cranking up, we want to be able to hold it right here. It's just a subtle little cradle, right? I've talked about grip. I mean, it's the same grip we use for everything, but the shaft is in your fingers and your thumb is on the side of the shaft, right? So it's here. Obviously, the motion's different than in a power cradle. So when we practice it, the best way to explain it, our, my arm is doing, see my arm is going out, but my wrist is curling in. And then on the way back in, my arm is coming in and my wrist is going away from the body. So I like to teach it with one hand because it's kind of easy, but this is how it would look. See my hands? My arm goes out, my wrist curls in. My arm goes out, my wrist curls in. Then my arm goes in, my wrist curls away. Right? That's a power cradle. Real simple. If you are not doing that, I'm sorry, that is a shooting cradle. If you're not doing that, it's really going to have a really bad impact on the way you throw, catch. Because what I see a lot of kids, they're here. Now you go to throw, and you're trying to move your hand. You're sliding it. That hand needs to be in place as we get set to go. All right? And I would think that that makes sense for a lot of people. So the one way we can practice it, well, there's two ways. The first is the motion. So... I would start with the ball and just straighten your arm and turn your palm to your cell, right? And then when, you palm, when your arm comes in, turn your palm away. Then you can do it either with the head of a stick or just one hand, right? One hand. If you notice, it's real subtle. My wrist is moving a little bit, but really not too much, right? And then as you get more comfortable, you want to add the bottom hand, but it can't, it can't be so tight that it affects the stick. We, we control with the top hand, Right? If that makes sense. So once you get the motion down, then what you, I mean, you can constantly practice is just different angles, really. Get high, get it down by your hip, get it low, just cradle, just get used to moving the ball from different angles. Switch hands, right? You can throw it. You don't even have to throw it. You can just do cradling um, in your bedroom. 
getting used to it. If that makes sense. So that's the shooting cradle. Super, super important. Uh, and I hope you guys got something out of that. I hope you guys liked our latest video. If you want a free lacrosse training workout that will help you add 10 miles per hour to your shot, just click here or click the link in the description, enter in your email, and I will send it directly to your email. Don't forget to subscribe, like us, or leave a comment. Until next time, keep working.